my story is a love story, but only those tortured by love can know what I mean. I am not unfeeling, stupid or moronic. I am a woman who had a great love and always will have it. Imprisoned in the death house has only strengthened my feelings for Raymond. Martha was born as Martha Jewel Seabrook in Milton, Florida in 1920. She was the youngest child of William Seabrook, a submissive man who abandoned his family when she was just 10 years old, and a very dominant mother. As a child, she was very shy and overweight. She developed sexually and started to become interested in boys at the young age of nine. This made her mother paranoid about leaving her alone with men, which then contributed to her loneliness and sexual desire. At her trial, she claimed that she was raped once by her brother, but that her mother blamed her for it and beat her. She ran away from home as a teenager, but then later returned. In 1942, she graduated as a nurse in Penascola, but had trouble finding work due to her appearance. After working in a funeral home washing and preparing the bodies for burial, she became depressed and moved to California, where she was hired in a hospital. Meanwhile, she was engaged in casual sex with men that she met at a bus stop. When she became pregnant, she asked the father to marry her, but he refused and committed suicide. Martha suffered a nervous collapse and returned to Penascola, where she claimed to have married a serviceman who was killed in action in the Pacific. She was hired in the same Penascola hospital where she gave birth to her first child, but she was fired for scandalous behaviour on May 31st, 1944. On December 13, she married a bus driver, Alfred Beck, but she then filed for divorce after only just six months of being married and while being pregnant with a second child. On February 15, 1946, she began working at a residence for disabled children and was promoted to director in the fall. However, she became an alcoholic and a compulsive consumer of romantic novels and films. In November, an acquaintance played a prank on her by writing to the New York Lonely Hearts Club in her name. Raymond Fernandez was born in Hawaii in 1914. His father treated him harshly for unknown reasons, but he refused to school Raymond and would force him to do the most demeaning work. When he was 16, Raymond and two other boys stole two chickens. The other boys' families paid bail, but Raymond's father refused and he was imprisoned for two months. Afterwards, the family moved to southern Spain, where his father became mayor of a small town in Granada, Providence. At age 20, he moved to Gibraltar, where he worked as an ice cream vendor, and he gathered intelligence for the British during World War II. In December 1945, Raymond boarded a ship to the US without his family. While sailing near Curacao, a steel hatch fell on him and he had multiple skull fractures. The accident changed his personality dramatically and he became impulsive, erratic and addicted to sex. Shortly after his discharge from the hospital in 1946, he was arrested in Mobile, Alabama and charged with robbery for trying to pass stolen clothing through customs. Raymond pled guilty to the charge but claimed that he could not resist his actions and that he didn't know why he did them. He was sentenced to one year and was imprisoned in Tallahassee, Florida, where his cellmate converted him to believe in voodoo, hypnotism and black magic. In December 1946, he moved with relatives in New York City and joined a local Lonely Hearts Club called the Mother Denines Friendly Club. He wrote to women in the club with great success. In 1947, he met with Lucilla Thompson, a divorced cook who ran a New York City boarding house with her mother. After becoming her tenant, the two started a relationship and left for a vacation in Spain in October. They visited plenty of cities and at the Gibraltar border inexplicably introduced his lover to his wife and children. On November 7th, Lucilla argued with Raymond and threatened to return to the US alone. The next morning, she was found dead in a hotel room and the cause was identified as a heart attack triggered by gastroenteritis. Now here comes Raymond and Martha's story and how they met. But after Lucilla died, Raymond returned and showed her mother a forged will that named him as her only heir. But during the time that Raymond was part of the Lonely Hearts Club, he found Martha's letter that a colleague had pranked and sent in on her behalf, telling her that he intended to visit her shortly before Christmas. After two days together, he realised that Martha was poorer than the letter claimed and decided to return to New York after making it an excuse. Martha wrote several romantic letters to him to which he replied that she misinterpreted him and that they should never meet again. 
In response, Martha wrote that she was going to kill herself. The letter had the desired effect and Raymond invited Martha to New York. The residents conceded Martha a two-week leave. However, later she found that she had been fired without explanation. On January 18th, 1948, she surprised Raymond by ringing the boarding house door with her two children. When he said he could have children in the house, she sent them to her mother and threw Lucilla's mother out. In the last attempt to make her leave, Raymond confessed that he was a con artist and that his life was based on ripping off women from Lonely Hearts Club. However, she had chosen to stay and become his accomplice. On February 28th, he drove to Fairfax, Virginia, where they found married retired school teacher Esther Hen and brought her to New York. Martha refused to leave him alone and accompanied him for the trip, forcing him to introduce her as her sister in law. Esther got into many arguments with him, who wanted her to write her insurance policies and retirement pension under his name. After hearing about Lucilla's death from other tenants, she left the city and began proceedings to recover her car and $300 that he had taken from her. Pressured by a paternity claim from a woman in New York, they sold the house and travelled to Green Forest, Arkansas, where they met Myrtle Young. Raymond and Myrtle got married in Cook County, Illinois on August 14th and the trio then travelled to a modest rooming house in Chicago for their honeymoon. After three days, an argument erupted between Raymond, who did not want to consummate the marriage, so Myrtle threatened to leave if Martha didn't. Myrtle was forced to ingest barbiturates and was placed on a bus to Arkansas after they stole $4,000 from her. During the trip, she suffered a brain hemorrhage and died at hospital. Around Christmas, Raymond wrote to a widow from Albany, New York, named Janet Fay, claiming that his name was Charles Martin and that he shared her religious beliefs. On January 1st, both of them went to Janet's house, where he introduced Martha as his sister and claimed that they had lost their wallets. The next day, Janet accepted Raymond's marriage proposal and withdrew $2,500 from her account. The three then left for an apartment in Long Island and Janet was convinced to withdraw $3,500 more. At this point, they still weren't married. Janet slept with Martha and had asked her several questions about Charles's childhood, which she refused to answer. Janet became very angry and told Martha that she would not be living with them after they got married. When Janet went to talk to her fiancé, Martha ran after her and fatally struck her with a hammer. They then brought a large chest to put the body into and buried it in cement inside the basement of a rented house in Queens. On the same day, Raymond got a letter from Delphine Downing, a young widow from Grand Rapids, Michigan, who had a two-year-old daughter, Renalee. Martha was again introduced as Raymond's sister-in-law and he had slept several times with Delphine, which Martha couldn't take. On February 27th, Martha offered Delphine some pills that were sleeping pills. When she fell unconscious, they rolled a sheet around her head and Raymond shot her with her ex-husband's revolver. She was then buried in cement inside the basement. In the next two days, they considered different fates for Renly. Keeping her was an option for them because she was rejecting them and was refusing to eat, and they thought that leaving her at an orphanage would raise some suspicions. Finally, Raymond told Martha to kill the child, and so she drowned her in a basin. They then buried her with her mother. The same day, two concerned neighbours rang the door. Raymond and Martha spoke to them and then went to the movies. Once they returned, they were finally arrested by the police. They both made full confessions, which differed in some details. The buried bodies were exhumed and the Spanish police was alerted to reopen the 1947 case as a murder. As Michigan had abolished the death penalty in the 19th century, the state pressed no charges and extradited the couple to New York, where each faced one charge of first-degree murder for the death of Janet Fay. In June, they declared themselves not guilty by reason of insanity. However, 44 days after trial, they were found guilty and were sentenced to die in the electric chair. While in jail, Raymond told doctors that he had sincere affection and a great consideration for Martha, but he was unsure of loving her. The doctors told Martha that Raymond never loved her and that he was infected with syphilis, which crushed her. However, two hours before the execution on March 8th, 1951, Raymond sent her a message that read, I would like to yell to the world the love I feel for you. This contended Martha, who told a nurse that she was happy to die knowing that Raymond loved her. While in custody, Martha also exhorted police to clamp down on lonely heart clubs, claiming that they were frauds. The Mother Denin's Friendly Club was closed under charges of fraud, but it reopened immediately with a different name and the same fee of $5.